I know what the date is today. 15th. <laughs> I checked. We're getting back on track with things. It's about uh, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, so it's about uh, well, 17 hours into the day. Oh. We're going to have a long wait here. We've got a truck going out the pickup they have off on a long wait here. So enough, uh, Lionel seems to be uh, struggling. I was watching him today just for a bit. Uh, he's on the whole thing about uh, protecting children on the internet, which you know I agree. Yeah, that needs to be done. The problem is, is this the the the, the directions he goes in in terms of and this is his wife as well, and a lot a, a lot of people who get into this stuff. Oh, well, I know what's going on, and well, not necessarily. Uh, because you have to understand where the targeting is. How do you target someone for abduction? And it's not, you, you'll find more often than not, it's not people who uh, uh, put their kids on the internet, specifically. Uh, what happens more often than not is the trafficking occurs either typically from school, as there are... Uh, uh, sort of uh, organized crime associations within the teachers unions uh, all, all you have to do to understand that is look at who Jimmy Hoffa was to understand that organized crime is there is now fully functional this doesn't have to hide because the unions are fully in control and this is the issue of Democrats about why, why are the Democrats why is their hot button issue uh, uh, legalizing prostitution well, those organizations, the pimping organizations, are within the unions. And now the unions have control, then that's what, what it's about. I mean, the history of unions is not a good one. The, the unions, in terms of even, even union organizations, the people at the top, at the top were always the bankers. They were the aristocracy. This is why they emerged from the guilds. And if, if you know anything about guilds, you know that the stone cutters, the bricklayers, they were a guild. And what guild were they? They were the mis they, they were the, ma the mason guild of masonry. Masonry is stone laying, stone laying, brick laying. Anything that was made with stone and brick, you had a basin. And the thing is, is that a large, as I said before, we're going back to Voltaire, going back to a large chunk of the history, you'll find that um, a majority of the so called philosophers, including Leibniz and Newton, were listed as philosophers. Or of the so-called natural types, meaning that they were involved in magic. And this is what alchemy was. Alchemy was a form of magic. 
and that it had been in the system since the papacy uh, uh, which began about a thousand AD so this is I think for those who consider themselves to be Christian in terms of um, the Western Christianity Western Christianity uh, from about a thousand AD on was no longer Christian but rather pagan it simply had a Christian face but the reality of what was going on was anything but in terms of being Christian and so this has a long history and so what happens is you look into history you understand the history and what you'll find is that more often than not the people who are abducted aren't randomly taken off the streets, which is great for TV. It's good for TV shows and stuff like that, but the reality is far from the truth. Typically, people and mothers put their kids in the, put the kids in harm's way. They introduce the children to the predators. These are the uncles. These are the friends of the family who will make them stars. Uh, the predators, uh, no, some of the predators, they were in the business. They were all producers. And they were going to make these kids, these younger girls, stars. Right? And everybody would adore them. And it, 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 it's a slow work. You would invite the kid to a party. Right? You'd buy them a fancy dress or whatever type of clothing that they thought was nice. And you'd bring them to the party. And slowly, you'd work them and introduce them into the life of, basically, prostitution. So, and this was not... And, and, and the biggest draw was typically the children... ...of these predators who went to school had their friends and pulled their friends into the, uh, the, the life that they the life of prostitution it was part of a, a, a known part of, uh, of of going to school is that you know that some of the girls the prettier girls would, and particularly the more stupid girls uh, would be pulled into the life of prostitution because <coughs> the, the parent situation at home sometimes particularly if they're divorced and stuff like that you have these particular problems that pop up in terms of emotional problems and these people know how to play on that. And it's not even an issue of self-esteem. This whole self-esteem stuff is like a complete load of crap. Because in the world of postmodernism, law doesn't matter because everything is simply a concept. And we're, going, we're moving into a period of what's you known as arbitrary law, arbitrary values, arbitrary justice. I mean, that means it's up to the individual judge, the lawyer, or whatever, in the, whatever is in the crowd, whatever is popular, that's the rule of the day. There is no functional rule or law. 
something becomes popular enough, it's not legal, it's okay, and you're all right. Again, Lionel doesn't do anything like that. He, 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 and I think he tries to be, well, not committal. But that doesn't help either because he doesn't understand that in certain things, in certain ways, there are contradictory statements, contradictory, contradictory, contradictory positions. And these things in terms of the overall impact matter. So what happens, he considers himself to be open and liberal, but a large chunk of his positions will actually contradict what he's doing. So let's say, you know, you're going to, you're, 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 you're about protecting children. Well, the problem is, that's an issue of morality. If you've adjusted your morality and you have a person who's of, well, more ambiguous, your morals are whatever you think they are. Uh, you got a problem. Because just because you think being with children sexually or whatever they do in this case, cases, because it's more than just that. is wrong, immoral, well, the problem is that you set a standard of moral ambiguousness, of amorality, or moral plurality, they call it now. about 10 o'clock in the evening. That's about 22 hours into the, the day. It's mirror again. Enough seems to be off that uh, it warrants a repair. Cracks the uh, divots, the potholes. Then even the sewers, the indentations in the sewers, are enough to sort of uh, throw things out of alignment. <laughs> oh. Any day, anyways. Uh, kind of 
back in the situation where things seem to be ambiguous, there's no seems to be no particular direction. I am moving forward, but without necessarily knowing where specifically I'm going. I think that's that's the case more often than not. Well, even when you have an idea of where you're going, uh, there's always a possibility that you'll end up in a different direction than you uh, intended to be. In other words, where you end up is not always where you intended to go. Uh, and of course, the, for an intellectual like Lionel LeBron, this is something that would drive you up a wall. Because they thrive on certainty. And there's so much uncertainty. Imagine this. He sets up a whole club, a whole uh, initiative to protect children, only to end up putting the children into the very hands of the people, the predators he was trying to protect them from. Well, this is what this is what his wife Lynn Shaw is doing. Her efforts at protection. Her efforts at protection protecting the children winds up putting them right back into the same situation into the predators that she's trying to protect them from because they are the senators they are the the, the, the leaders the, polit the political leaders they are the lawmakers they're the lawyers they're the teachers they're in all the sections of society that are around them that are supposed to protect them the predators have gotten in and are very well protected by the unions. This is under that Project Veritas had brought out. And this was done in the Roman Catholic Church. That, you know, rather than going after the predator, they simply put they, uh, the administrators simply moved the priests around who was offending, who was molesting children, simply moved them from parish to parish. So uh, they coined a phrase called pass, passing the trash. Well, Father Gerthas caught union leaders at a particular party talking about, uh, uh, in terms of the school situation, of passing the trash. Did the exact same thing that was done in the church, in the, in the church issues with, 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 the, with the priests. So same situation. Not nothing has really changed. So what happens until you address this, you're not going to resolve the problem. You know, oh, keep your children off the internet. Why? Who are the predators? They're the police. Because it's been shown they're in the police. Uh, there was a, there was a, uh, a police department report that came out of Honolulu, showed that they were involved. There are a number of documentaries out there showing that the police are involved. The parole officers are involved. In other words, there's a number of good information out there. Not necessarily popular, but good enough anyways. That shows that the problem is systemic. There's even research from the Stanford University, Stanford University, the uh, Stanford University prison experiment that shows this behavior, that shows up, that showed up in Abu Ghraib. It shows the exact same type of abuse that we see as child molestation showing up on official police departments, on police forces, as something known as the Lucifer effect. The Lucifer effect. And we see this, it's been known about since the 1970s. As a matter of fact, it was in the, in the Dirty Harry movies. When Sissy Pitt Space uh, 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 played a uh, prostitute. And why did, he, the, the, uh, why did Harry, Dirty Harry, have to protect her? Uh, and, and who was he protecting her? Well, she was a prostitute. She was going to give uh, uh, She was going to be a witness at a case. Who was the case against? One of the mayors. He had been involved with her. And he didn't want her to get out. And so they designed this whole cordon to stop him from bringing her to the courthouse. Now this guy did his duty. Dirty Harry did his duty and, you know, shot everybody up, everybody up along the way. Well, here's what happens. He hands her over to the court. Who's in the court systems? 
the very same predators that were trying to kill her all the way through. And this is sort of the same situation here. And this is, again, again what you can talk about, the matrix. Is that when you're in the matrix, you're in a systemic system, it doesn't matter if you go to the authority to complain. It's that the authority is part of the matrix. The system is part of the matrix. And this is what they call systemic. So why do you have the sort of Black Lives Matter type of thing? Well, it, yes, it is systemic, but it's not simply against blacks. It's, it's, it's an issue that's been around for a long time and known for a long time. And then you go back and see it in the, the uh, Stanford University prison experiment. But yet none of this ever comes up, none of it's ever addressed. And so the situation goes on. And this is the same the same thing is true uh, with uh, uh, with uh, Lila Roth's uh, life. Hasn't addressed any of the systemic issues. Even though they're right there even though Lionel has dealt with a large chunk of the systemic issues. Rather than battling the systemic issue, he goes after the internet and uh, social network. He goes after the people, the parents, who put their children, uh, 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 who, who, who photograph their children on the, uh, and put their pictures up on the social media. Yet, if you study the history of victimization, the history of trafficking and how they choose their victims, you'll see that the profile of the predator is far from random. They always hunt in the areas that they're familiar. They never go outside of it. Because there's never really a need to go outside. Predators always hunt within predictable t uh, territories that they know and understand. In other words, they know their victims. And this has been the case from almost all of the, the, uh, 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 the, the serial killers the, and, the, and these former predators always hunt in that me methodology. Because see, if you st do a, a study in <coughs> serial killers and, and predators, criminal predators, you'll find this is the same pattern. Thank <laughs> you.